Hi guys! Uh, welcome back to Dream Daddy. So I'm going to be real time dubbing this again. I get to work on packing various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass, I get some good work done. The washer and dryer unit is both washing and drying. I can actually walk through the living room, without, living room without tripping over boxes. That was quick. I have to do this fairly quick. The washer, okay. First visitor already? I walk over to the door and open it. Hello? A handsome, clean cut man stands at my door, branching a plate of cookies. Hello? Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Oh, yes, hi. I'm Lars. That's what my name is. I saw the moving van and I thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers, But between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I like that. It makes, yeah. We both share a laugh. Kids, right? Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Well, thanks for the cookies. Amanda disappears with the cookies. Amanda, come back, and she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try to, try to raise more than two. I have four kids. What have you done? Oh, uh, I meant... Don't worry, you didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again? Uh, yeah, okay. Is the missus around? No, not anymore. She died. Oh, uh, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but, comp but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm, in I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? That smile. I just love that smile. That sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts to walk away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff. I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. Wink. Oh my gosh, no. And with that, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room with crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See? You're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. It makes you feel, if it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? <laughs> Amanda. I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? Joseph probably wants his plate back. I think we get a ton of good neighbor points if we bring this back. We're gonna be the best neighbors in the whole cul-de-sac. We're gonna kick all the other neighbors' butts. With kindness. Amanda and I step outside. Shoot, I'm actually not sure which house is his. I'd hazard a guess it's the big one with all the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. Good eye, kid. Good eye. Good eye, Mike. <laughs> and remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. We walk up to the kids and wave. Hey guys, is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. That kid is... We just wanted to, uh, return this nice plate. And thank you for the cookies. The kid with his arms crossed is actually pretty cute. Jeez, these definitely are Joseph's kids. They all look, ex look exactly like him. They were really good. I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat any. 
chuckle nervously. Well, okay, we're just gonna set this plate down on the ground real gentle and then back away slowly. Right, Dad? Right, that's what we're gonna do. The kids' eyes bore into us as we scurry away. I could feel their gaze on my back even as we approach our house. I need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kits. Let's grab some coffee. I'm feeling a little sluggish and, and coffee seems like the more responsible option than just taking a nap. I'm proud of you. Dad, tip number, okay, start building credits. We walk down the street to the Coffee Spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Man, this is in such convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table but he's very much within my personal zone. Dad. And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel like your face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact in a bin somewhere just out of sight now you're that, that, now you're that jerk who, who left their mug? Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda! We, we walk inside. The inside of the coffee spoon is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls and patrons lounge on well-worn couches. Some tune, cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Welcome to the Coffee Spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Oh, it's, uh, it's kind of dumb. It gets me, it gets mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea that, at the time. And I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer and every time. And now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I talk. But, but man, we're in and out, and I can't stop. So what'll it be? I scan the chalkboard menu and I am immediately overwhelmed. I'll have a... Godspeed you, black coffee. Ice, Tegan, and Sarah, chai, ant word. Uh, Ice, Tegan, and Sarah, man. Because I know who what Tegan and Sarah is. It's a Canadian band. I think they were playing at a good choice at a concert I was there on Canada Day once. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Tegan and Sarah, this really awesome Canadian indie band, formed in 1995. They were nominated for a Grammy in 2013 and are known for being mastered of not only pop hits, but meaningful lyricism. I'm doing the thing again. We're coming right up. And for you? I want a macchiato de Marco, please. Coming right up. Do you want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? Uh, medium? Wait, is Biggie Smalls big or small? Uh, I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt sex to making our drinks and Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. They were playing at a concert I think I was at on Canada Day once. What's his deal? Like Tegan and Sarah, I mean. I think it was them. Amanda and them are just people doing covers on their songs. Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you to listen to anyway. Hey, hey, Ska was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's all right. Good lumbar support, you sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. So I can't make make much commentary. Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. I can't make much commentary because it's going really fast. You should totally become friends with him. And I'll, I'm, it's gonna fi it's, I'm gonna fix that in the next few episodes. After the first four. Uh, I don't know. Come on, what do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and don't go outside and also don't talk to people. See? We're making progress! Matt sets our drinks down at our table and I have a sip. The iced teagle and Vera is delicious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi, we're new in the neighborhood and I'm, I'm Amanda and this is my dad, Lars. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. You know what? Let me get your guys' opinion on something. Matt goes into the back and comes up with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're gonna have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile of 
you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of... Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give that nana bread a taste if you want us to in free creative labor. I think that would commensurate with... Uh... I've taught her well. We have trained for this day. I was just gonna give you guys free banana bread anyway. Right, yes, that. Matt sets, serves us each a piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. I like Matt. <laughs> He's great. <sighs> this is amazing. Thanks, the secret ingredient is bananas. No, really, Matt, really now. <laughs> no, I didn't know that, bananas. So, any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad band puns, but I'll give it a shot. Look at Amanda's face. I love her smile. Definitely right said banana bread. Right said Fred. <laughs> like, right said Fred. But now it's about banana bread. I think the youngsters would like it, despite not getting it. That actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Yeah, right to the banana bread. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. I wanted to say baby because I thought it sounded cool, but once I said it, I realized that it just doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should leave saying baby as a professionals. Amanda has yellow eyes. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. See? It sounds good when you say it. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? I need a nap. We just had coffee. Have you ever known me to play by the rules? Your father is a rebel, sweetie. Now all aboard the train to Sleepy Time Junction. <laughs> Somebody's taking a train to Sleepy Time Junction. Someone is so tired he can barely function. So he's hopping on the train to Sleepy Time Junction. All aboard, cries the engineer. <laughs>